Hi, I'm Bill Hodges, and this is Spotlight on Government. Normally, we have office holders on the program talking about the various offices they hold. But today, we've got a rare treat. I have Joe Stiles. He's the Executive Director of Library Services for the Tampa Hillsborough County Public Library. Joe, it's a wonderful thing to have you on the program. Well, thank you for inviting me. If I had to pick one thing that has been influential in my career, it would be the library. Great, great. I've been a professional speaker and trainer now for over 30 years, and I practically lived with the library when I first built my programs. Your people were outstanding, and it must have been a joy for you to be with the library as long as you've been. I have. I've, I've enjoyed every minute of it. Every day is a new day. We learn something new every day. We serve the entire population from birth to death. I mean, we have uh, 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 interest, every interest that anyone in Hillsborough County has had, we have it because they've come <laughs> looking for more information and we learn from that. So we enjoy that. How long have you been with the library system? I have been with the library system since 1985, so it'll be 28 years in April. Wow. So I've been with it. I started out as a children's librarian in a branch library, and then I became uh, head of children's services, and in 1991, the director left, and I don't know how I got picked to be the acting director, but I did that for a year, and then in 92, um, they hired me as the library director. Obviously, somebody did something right, because I think our Hillsborough system is one of the best I've ever been exposed to. Well, we've been, our commission has been very supportive. Um, our history started really a hundred years ago, almost a hundred years ago. Uh, in 2014, we'll, we'll celebrate our 100th anniversary. But for most of that time, we were under the city of Tampa government. And then as the county grew, by 1984, uh, there was a state law crafted. In fact, Jen Platt uh, had a lot to do with that law being a crafted. Great lady and uh, the library became part of county government and I came not even a year later so we were just becoming uh, a part of county government when I came and of course as you know the county has just mushroomed and grew in every corner. Oh, yes even since and, we've been here we've been here 13 years. And well we like to plan at the library we've always had an active planning uh, component but trying to keep up with the growth there are times when we were lagging behind and, and running to catch up but we have uh, opened a lot of libraries. In 1991, I think we had 13 branches. We now have 25 facilities. We have two mobile units, one of which is called the Cybermobile, and it uh, serves primarily Spanish-speaking throughout the county. And then we have uh, strengthened our relationships with other libraries, including the private Sun City Library and also the two municipals in Plant City and Temple Terrace. Boy, that Sun City Library gets an awful lot of use. They do. Yes, they do. It is fantastic. The number of people walk in and out of that little building. And they have a really... brand new director, too, Elaine yes. Brickenshower, and she's fantastic. I've known Elaine since the entire the whole time I've been in Florida. She was uh, down south a little bit in Sarasota, and then she came to St. Petersburg, and now she's, uh, she's in, in Sun City. Yeah, my wife Phyllis interviewed her on her first week there in the new job. And she's just an outstanding lady. Oh, she is. She is. She is. We, we have worked together to strengthen the actual um, bandwidth of the computers that we have there. So the, you should see that self-checkout a lot faster than it had been because we've just done that. Let's talk about the changes you've seen. Before we go into what's there now, I think it's important that people kind of get a chronology of the changes that you've seen over those 28 years. Well, the what, the, what ones do you think are most significant? Well, I think the shift from just print to the electronic is, has made a big difference. And obviously, uh, with print books, uh, and, and our budgets weren't that great for many years, you, you placed uh, the, the largest collections in the largest libraries. And for a long time, we had the main library downtown, and we had one or two large branches. But now we have regional libraries in every part of this county. And um, we even continue to build those print collections into those regional libraries. But now so much of it is going through technology that you can have access to it, not only from any library, but much of that information is available to you by way of our web page at home. And so when I was going through school uh, 40 years ago, I've been a librarian 40 <laughs> years, my professors would say, why are you going to be a librarian? It's all going to be gone away in, in no time. I don't think libraries are going away. They have to change, and the library without walls is truly here today. 
Uh, our web page is just as important to many of our users as one of our big uh, regional libraries. In fact, every day people come in through that web page, they download ebooks, they uh, look up all kinds of periodical and research material, and, um, and they uh, even ask reference questions online, and they never set foot in the library. So I think the big change now is we used to try to meet everyone at the door as soon as they arrived and uh, to make an effort to serve them. Now we are reaching out to them through the computer and trying to do the same thing. I mean, libraries have to be convenient or people won't use us. And so we are trying our best to use the technology. And uh, you, you've seen in the last, just the last three years, a huge change in the, the amount of technology. Now, that does not mean that we're building smaller libraries. And in, uh, in the expansions that we've Now, when done, I look at the one you've built in South County, that's a monster. Well, since 2006, we have added 140 square feet of library space throughout the county. But that space is going to have to be reconfigured. We're expanding three of those libraries currently. And uh, up, up or Tampa Bay, which is way up in the northwest part of the county, and then um, Broomingdale, which is bursting at the seams, and the Jimmy Kill Library, which is also to the north, a little bit to the northwest. Those libraries, you're going to see more people space, less bookshelves, uh, more people space, places for uh, our Wi Fi is becoming more and more important uh, because oh, you very. can't buy enough computers. People are bringing in their handheld devices, they're bringing in their laptops, and, but yet they want to go into our uh, subscription databases, which we provide online, and pull out data and um, save it and then merge it into the reports they're doing or uh, even photographs and things like that. So we're, people are leaving with their, uh, high school kids have been leaving for some time now with their whole paper on the thumb drive uh, <laughs> when they leave the library. You and know, before you leave, before you leave the, the idea of people coming in and using the Wi-Fi and using your computers and things like that, we're moving our South Shore Toastmasters Club to the library. There in South Shore Regional. And it'll be fantastic. You've got great, great rooms. Mm -hmm. We're going to be moving it there the second and fourth Tuesdays at 6 o'clock in the evening. I invite anybody that would like to come out and see what Toastmasters is about to come. But the other night we had a preliminary meeting there. And as it turned out, one of our members gets all of her email through going into the library into and the using library. your computer. Yes. And she had not got her email telling her that we were going to have the meeting. But when we all walked in, she was there. I mean, it was just purely an accident that it happened. But a lot of people do that, I suspect. Well, and we, we had, uh, used to be with the cruise ships that came into Tampa and all of the uh, freighters, the staffs for all those ships would come to the John Germany Library, pick up their email and so oh forth. Oh my goodness, yes. Uh, but now you're seeing less of that because with the handheld devices, you're seeing people uh, pick up their email in different ways. We do do a lot of classes. One of our missions is not only to supply the new technology information, but to teach people how to get to it fast and easy. So we have classes being taught in every library around the county. Simple classes, if people have never keyboard before, if they've never used a handheld device or downloaded, uh, they, uh, somebody gave them a new e-reader, we have classes on that. <laughs> but we also have basic introduction to email. Uh, we've had people that want to email their grandchildren around the world. And, and of course, as you know, that's a very inexpensive way to do that. Although we're seeing emailing not to be the hottest item anymore. Texting has become the hottest do item. Do you have Skype on your computers? We do have Skype on our computers. We, have, we haven't used Skype as much as I'd like for meetings, you know, internal meetings. But uh, we are so busy that most of those meetings are small meetings now. We have very few where we get the entire staff together. We're so large, we used to do that. But we do use that from time to time and we have it available. So our rooms, and you're going to see more and more of that. I think coming to the library is going to be a technology event. Um, we are planning yet a new library that's already funded. It, it's not even had design work. We're still trying to get the land together up in what is called the university area, uh, not far from here, off of 22nd. And uh, we're working with uh, Commissioner Christ on that. And he tells me, uh, this is going to be a library like any you've never seen before. And yeah. I know what he's talking about. He's talking about a really a technology, information technology center where the library, the print part of it is just one piece of it. 
and we may be, um, as you walk in the door, you may have to check out a handheld device in order to get to the information. So we really are um, trying to uh, gauge what the public is using and trying to fit the needs there. Yet we're looking back that 100 years, we're doing <laughs> road shows around the county. It's amazing what citizens have salvaged over the years. There used to be a branch called the Hyde Park branch in South Tampa. At one of our road shows, a woman came in with the sign that was on that building uh, when we closed it many years ago, and she had, her mother had taken it home for safekeeping, oh, really? and she gave it back to us. Commissioner so. Christ is one of my favorite people. Uh, anything he gets involved with, it gets done right. It gets done right, and it gets done with a flair and, and the best technology, the best... Uh, uh, he, he's interested in art, he's interested in everything that will make the community a better community. He certainly is. When, when we look at these various libraries, are the libraries dedicated to certain things? Uh, I know in the, the regional library, which is again the closest one to me and the one I had the most time with, and by the way, Frank Collier down there is one of the nicest young men. Uh, he, is, he is the epitome of what I think library people are, oh, good. first class. But he's been willing to show me a lot of the things that they have down there. In fact, suggested I have you on the show. Oh, great, great. But I know that one is heavy with the uh, going back and family histories and things of that nature. Genealogy, yes. Is that mostly to that library is it, or are they all trying to cover all the areas. Well, genealogy is specialized and the material goes out of print very fast. Many of those family histories are printed, uh, uh, you know, paid for for printing and you may only have a run of so many hundred copies or whatever. So uh, we have been the center, the main library has been the center of the Florida Genealogy Society, which is our largest local genealogy group for many years and some years ago we learned that there was an interest in South County and Brandon and so uh, we actually, uh, the library actually hired a consultant to come in, bring all these groups together and say let, let us plan, we don't want to compete and we can't put the same material in every location. One, there's not shelving in the small ones and two, you just can't seem to find um, copies, a lot of it's out of print. So from that study, South Shore, which because they have so many people from around the world, took on the international, whereas the original collection in the main library is primarily the 13 colonies with a few little extras from the Midwest because we've had so many people move to the Tampa Bay area from the Midwest. The one out in Brandon is very heavily in English. Uh, so many of those uh, original families had English background. So we have a genealogy collection in the Bloomingdale Library. We have a large one at South Shore that's been supported by their genealogy society. The largest, of course, is in the main library or the John Germany Library. And uh, what we've tried to do, anything in electronic format, we have tried to duplicate that so it's available in all those locations. We have not done that in the Northwest County for one major reason. The, the Mormon uh, collection out there is very large. We have a good working relationship with them. They call us, we send people to them, and instead of um, wasting tax dollars and trying to duplicate sure. that great collection out there, we work with them. So we've got genealogy available in every corner of the county. If I wanted to become involved in genealogy, if I wanted to learn about it, if I went to the library, is there a charge? Are there classes that I have to pay for or any, any charges that I have to there are pay no to charges. use any of it? There are no charges and there are classes. You ask Frank. <laughs> In your location, you ask Frank. And we have staff uh, uh, from, uh, we, we try to have staff in each location that know their collection but we probably would send for the beginning classes because we have curriculum. We do not teach a class unless there's a written curriculum that's been looked at by uh, other librarians because we want you to be able to get the same information as someone who took that same class in another library around the county. The library board has tried very hard to be fair and equal to the entire county. So um, let's hope that if you walked in our new Tampa library, which is to the far northeast, or our Jimmy Kill library to the far northwest, you would feel that same feeling you walk as you walk in the South Shore. We try to keep 
all the libraries as contemporary as in, in I, I like to tell my staff I want them to look like the day they open <laughs> and that's a challenge but but they don't belong to us they belong to you the taxpayers so uh, we feel strongly about that but the collections are the same way so that uh, we we try to have that quality of classes whether it's uh, an e-book class or a genealogy class or even our children's programming and we do a lot of different things in that area uh, we have coordinators that work out of the main library to make sure that everybody's getting an equal and fair treatment around the county. I, uh, my first exposure with the, to the library system here was the Ruskin Library, which is very small mm -hmm. and has been there a long, long time. But they really do keep it up very nicely. The Ruskin Library is very, very um, important to that community, a part of that community's history. And believe it or not, it has been expanded once, and then we've added a parking lot. That uh, I was I was in the system when uh, they dedicated the expansion onto the back of the building, and then uh, I had uh, I got to participate in the the new parking lot expansion. However, you know where it's located. It's located on one of the larger streams that comes through there. Yep. And a level one storm uh, is not gonna uh, gonna be there and be dry. So oh, really? We looked very closely uh, when we decided to build a regional library uh, in a high and dry area, which uh, it is over on 19th. Uh, we have two or three libraries, the Port Tampa Library, which is historical. It's also one of those uh, libraries that would be underwater in a, in a bad uh, Hurricane One Level One. So um, we plan for that. We try not to put books on the bottom shelf. Uh, we do all these things to get ready every time there's a storm. We do everything we can to to prepare for uh, the and nature. And that's a real threat in Ruskin because you're oh, sitting right on a stream so. or inlet. So. Very much so. We're excited now because the fire station has been turned into a culture center. It's right behind us across the stream. And our children's uh, staff are working very closely with the staff there. And that gives us more room. It is a small building. Our meeting room is very small there. And now that we have access and a partnership with the, uh, the new cultural center, we are doing a lot of things together to uh, Who heads up that. your children's? Lori Tante is our children's coordinator. We should call her our youth coordinator. She works with children from uh, birth all the way to high school. So we have all of our young, and our young adult program is booming. I have to say, I was a children's librarian. I was the former children's coordinator many years ago. Uh, and I have never seen young people, they love technology. And we are trying to use that technology to the, to the best to draw them in and to introduce them not only to what's in e-format, but also they're actually taking out some print material too. So it's been a great opportunity and, and, and she certainly, Lori, has probably done more than any coordinator in that role since I've worked here to draw in those teams. She really knows how to draw those teams in. It's a little threatening when you think that print materials are going away to a, a great extent with a lot of people. Uh, I just. I don't know, there's something about a book. Well, I don't think print will ever totally go away. Just as my professor told me libraries were going to go away, I think that it will just be, it'll balance out and, and everyone's going to have their preference. And I think it's going to take a, a generation or more before you're going to see, a, you know, almost very little print. And, and then there may be a resurgent. I mean, every technology changes. As we've been preparing for this 100th anniversary, I had the opportunity to read a a, a partial speech uh, that a former director, Mr. Freeze, and he he started his office in 1947 and finished in, in 1965. And he was speaking to a ladies' club in South Tampa the same afternoon that TV came live to Tampa. Before that, we had local TV, but we mm -hmm. did not have national TV. And apparently the women's club just thought that was the end of the library. <laughs> and he was calming them down in his speech and said, it's just another technology and the library will learn to adjust to it and fit to it. Uh, particularly in the area of children's books, although we have uh, partnered recently with the, uh, with the Hillsborough County Schools uh, on a product called My Own Reader, which is uh, well over 2,000 e-books, electronic books that children can access at the library, at school, on their held-held devices, anywhere they are that they can get access to electronic. 
and they can read those books. And they're readers. They're, they're, they've been designed to help vocabulary growth. And, and um, on top of that, the school system is measuring the success of, of how the reading is going up with that. And even though we have uh, Tumble Books and a few other e-series for youth, I don't think there's anything going to, anytime soon, going to go away from the, the dad who sits down at night with his two children and does the bedtime stories. That, I hope not. I don't think so. I don't think that's going to go away. Because there's just something about being able to sit there with your child with a book and look at the pictures. And it wouldn't be the same going across the video screen. I mentioned uh, Commissioner Chris earlier when we were talking about this new library in 22nd. We are going to be doing a partnership with Mueller Elementary. Uh, they have a very small media center, so we're going to build a fairly sizable print collection in the new library there. And of course, we also know that he has a baby daughter, so I, I know that he would he would support me in that. The, the print is going to be there for the, for the fathers and the grandfathers when the, the children uh, are having story hour and bedtime. And the illustrations, too. The, some of the best art in our libraries are in those, uh, those picture books because the illustrations are great. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about volunteers. Uh, do you need volunteers? How can you use volunteers? What kind of volunteer positions might there be? We do have job descriptions for our volunteers, but if uh, someone's interested and, and they see something at the library that they would like to do, we'll do our best to write a new description. It, we have more volunteers now than we've ever had in the history of our library, and the library board, which is appointed by the county commission, there are 12 citizens, and I report to them. They guide everything we do. They set all of our policies. At each of their monthly meetings, they hand out awards to our volunteers when they reach 100 hours, and it's amazing when I when I, I get to read uh, and, and bring the volunteer up and get to read what they've done for the library of the last period of time. And um, they're working in every area. They're working under the direction of a librarian. And um, uh, we could not exist without them, particularly since, as you well know, the budgets have been very, very tight. Uh, we have lost 25% of our staff um, since 2006. The same time, we are expanding our floor space by 140 thousand square feet and we've done that two ways we've done that with technology like the self-checkout machines and with more volunteers so we treasure our volunteers I, I know John Bowker you probably have heard that name or know yes. John uh, he talks about it quite a bit in his e-news out there yes. in Sun City Center yes about what the friends of the library are doing and what special events and things and others that they're having yes well and, and also it's uh, I, I strongly believe, and I think my staff, uh, if they didn't feel that way 21 years ago, they've learned to feel that way, that the libraries belong to the citizens. And the more citizens we have in the library, either as volunteers or our friends, uh, our friends' boards, our library boards, um, that means we're strong. Because if the library, when the, when the library stops being important to the citizen and including the citizen, that's when you have to worry about whether the library is going to be there or not. Well, they're your best ambassadors. <laughs> that's absolutely true. I mean, who can be yeah. a better ambassador than somebody that volunteers there, gives up their time and treasure to do so? Absolutely. And they don't mind calling me if there's something they think needs to be fixed either, and I appreciate that. Joe, one of the things that I found out is that you are very reachable. It amazes me. A lot of executive directors of big organizations like yourself are not near as reachable as you are, and you have a staff that work directly for you that just seem to be outstanding. Well, they, they again, we, we feel strongly that we're here because of all the taxpayers in the county, and, um, and we serve everybody. Sometimes we serve people that are hard to serve, but we will find <laughs> a way. I, I would like to share one story. You mean everybody's not easy? No, I would like to share one story. A couple years ago, we had a man call me up, and he said, um, there is uh, a limit here. You only can take out 10 movies at one time. And I really only make a trip to the library once um, every four or five weeks, and I'd like to take out more. And I just assumed he had some kind of a um, disability, and so I asked the staff to put a note in his field to give that exception to him. And then uh, as we upgrade our computer system, I was told, oh, no, that gap's the, you can't do that anymore. You can't put that note in the field. And he calls me back, and we're on the phone, and I'm trying to explain to him that, that that may go away. And he shares with me that he cannot read, that he is a Vietnam veteran, and that he knows he pays his taxes because his son interprets his tax bill to him. 
and he cannot read. And he says, the, the movies I get from the library is the only use that I can make of the library. And you can imagine how that touched me. And uh -huh. so we changed the rules so that everybody can have as many videos as they want to take because I felt strongly that there are things out there I learn every day too. That taught me a very valuable lesson that he was a library user and yet he could not read. Now we have the Hillsborough County Literacy Council. We have all kinds of programs where people are learning to read, but he felt he was at a point in his life where the movies were enough. And, um, and I, was, I was glad he shared that with me. So I do think people do call and uh, the staff always knows if they reach me, we're gonna look at that rule one more time. <laughs> we, I, I don't read. I mean, I can read, but I'm not, I'm not a reader when it comes to reading for pleasure. I'm sorry, it's just not something I do. I read so much business material that it just takes me forever to get through it and I don't have time for books. Uh, but I love to know what's in books and the audio books, to me, are a godsend. I never leave the house without an audio book playing in the car. And so many people are using them that way. And they have been very, very popular. And even in the e-formats now where you can download them on your iPod and so forth, we are expanding our collections. But we, we had a discussion about that. Two weeks is not enough for us slow listeners. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we'll work on our vendors for that. Right now, the, uh, the publishing industry is going through a massive change with the e-books. Um, uh, people might think that it's easier to make an e-book or it's going to be cheaper. It's not cheaper. Many of the publishers, and I think they're afraid they're not going to have the long-term return as they did on the print material. Uh, we've had publishers that tried to sell everything $15, $60 a book, where we usually pay not more than 20 because we get a discount from our big vendors. Mm -hmm. And the American Library Association has taken a couple of them to court, and there's been all kinds of things going on. But I think that's just the fact that it's just now beginning to settle down. And uh, Amazon, by making, uh, uh, by making the uh, handheld device that they, uh, that they marketed, be able to accept other downloadable books was a great step in the right direction of sharing information because you don't want information just to be able to be um, had by those who can afford to buy it. And you know we have many, many, many families that they're and living on budgets. Th there is the nut of the whole thing. The wealthy can always go buy it. Yep, absolutely. But you make it available to everybody and for me, Joe, that is the real strong point in everything you do is that everyone has that information. We've run out of time. And I really have enjoyed your coming in. Would you consider coming back? Oh, certainly, certainly. Well, you've only got two more years, so we've got to work <laughs> to get you in on time, right? Okay. Yes, yes, thank you. I'll talk about the 100th anniversary as we get closer. That would be fun. Let's do that. Okay. Let's do a 100th anniversary show. Okay. Joe Steins. Director, Hillsborough County, well, actually Tampa, Hillsborough County Public Library. I am so pleased you are here. Thank you so much for coming. You're unique, you're special, and you're great. Tell yourself so often because you are, you know. And we'll see you on the next Spotlight on Government. And Joe, I'm going to hold you to the fact that you're coming back, right? Okay. Right. We'll see you on the next Spotlight on Government. Bye now. Thank you.